Hello everyone, uh, Peter Bracken here. I'm delighted to get the opportunity to vlog here on uh, uh, Ashley's uh, website. So thank you very much Ashley for giving me the opportunity. It's fantastic. Um, and this will be the first of hopefully three or four part series over the next uh, year and a half or so. Just to plot my project uh, progress of uh, a project that I can't really say what it's about but it's basically how sport can help beat the climate emergency and um, and that's it and um, you know I, uh, my background is in uh, sport and professional rugby I was a professional rugby player for 10 years and um, uh, played with uh, underage with Leinster but also played a little bit with Munster, played a lot with Connacht, uh, Wasps over in England, played a little bit in France as well, and uh, went into coaching afterwards. And um, I'm now a full-time carer to my um, uh, high-functioning autistic uh, child. And um, to supplement my income, uh, about three years ago, um, how did I get into environmentalism and, and activity and whatever? Okay, I'm not an eco-warrior. I eat meat and I do lots of uh, bold stuff, but um, I am making a concerted effort to reduce my carbon footprint and um, uh, do my best. And I'm improving every week. So, um, and I'm not here to lecture anybody. And I'm just... My whole project's around um, just a normal dad who, what can us all do to leave the planet in a better uh, condition than it is now um, for the next generations? Because really we've only about four generations of human beings left in this planet and we keep burning fossil fuels and destroying the planet as we're doing. So um, now the messaging of we everyone has to go back and uh, be hunter gatherers and live in trees or we're all going to die and uh, it's going to be a complete catastrophe hasn't worked okay that messaging is, um, uh, has been going out for 50 years now and hasn't worked so I'm going to focus on solutions what technologies are there and they're there uh, and what are solutions that every person every normal person can do in their everyday life small things to improve to uh, beat this um, uh, climate emergency. So, um, and how did I get into it? Yeah, well, um, I drove an electric car for the first time about two and a half years ago, and oh, oh my God, I didn't realise how amazing they were. And, and uh, I ended up trying to sell electric, electric cars here in County Mayo for a while, and wasting my time okay i was ahead of myself is it any different now not really okay um you're still trying to bust all the myths around electric vehicles um and it, it's funny it, it is changing because now uh, there's no longer any backlash from the petrol heads people that really know cars people that really know cars know the performance is just amazing for them they'll out accelerate they're just more fun easier to drive than a, a petrol or diesel car their their blockage is though the whole it's usually lads to be fair it's like the whole macho thing oh I love the roar of V8 engine and whatever but generally the, anyone that gives you a gap back that is driving a, like a 1.4 uh, Ford Focus, like, so they're not driving a... But anyway, look, but they'll get over that. What I didn't realise is the backlash that I get from people in the environmental space saying, oh, no, no, they're just as bad or terrible and, you know, we should all be walking and, uh, uh, and cycling and all that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, we should. That would be the ultimate goal. But, you know, if you can get someone... Uh, it's not realistic, though. It's not realistic. And it, uh, my belief is that oh, we have all the technologies here as human beings to keep the luxuries we have, keep the standard that we live in, because we as human beings are not going to go backwards. We're not going to go back living in trees and be hunter-gatherers to save the planet. It's not going to happen, okay? And that messaging that we that's what we have to do hasn't worked. Okay, so we need to new, look at the solutions that are there and keep our quality of life. And do you know what? We can bring the Western quality of life and all that technology to uh, third world countries and um, you know, they can prosper too because the world is no longer reliant on big oil and oil. Okay, because and here in Ireland, we can lead whether we will or not. I don't know. 
looking like we'll follow as we normally do, okay? But, you know, we can be the new big oil because we have the Atlantic Ocean um, at our doorstep, blowing wind, blowing big waves, and, um, you know, we have enough sunlight as well. So renewable energy is a huge thing. Um, and I'm going to take a look during my project. So how can sport, how can... Uh, people involved in sport, how can sporting clubs um, um, lead in, in climate change? Well, you know, uh, they can put solar panels on the roofs of the building to start with, insulated properly and reduced all their costs. And with COVID, clubs are struggling for money. So there is an opportunity to make clubs aware and uh, sporting organisations and sporting people aware of the solutions that are there that will be cheaper for them as clubs but also um, better for the environment and that's how sport can lead you know there's all the NFL stadiums in in um, uh, United States uh, American football um, they're all powered by solar panels on the roof so if the Texas uh, Houston Houston Texans can use renewable energy to power their state their stadium and Houston Texans used to be called the Houston Oilers. So if that organization down in the heart of big oil country in the States can, can go renewable energy, there's no reason why every sports club in the world can't. There's no reason why here in Ireland we can't have uh, renewable energy powering um, Crow Park, Aviva Stadium, Toman Park, all these places. And um, so I'm going to be taking a look at that in the next year and a half. And it'd be great if you could follow, uh, if you're interested, if you think it's scrap, don't bother. Okay, but if you think uh, I have something more sharing, uh, it'd be brilliant. Uh, to do that and uh, I'll be sharing my progress here on the uh, website um, these vlogs so but I'll be also be taking a look at uh, other solutions like um, buildings construction um, um, biodiversity nature um, holistic sustainable farming um, as I'm going uh, along this and yeah any support and following and feedback, a constructive feedback you could give, I could really appreciate it. Oh, and I forgot, there's wind turbines there at full steam behind me at the top of the mountain here in Castle Bar, uh, which is great to see. Some people don't like them, uh, which is a bit strange. Uh, some people, you know, seem to prefer smoke billowing out of big peat power stations. Uh, but, you know, I think they're a better solution. And uh, let's drive on from there. Thank you.